So fair warning, I have had the hiccups for the better part of half an hour, which is actually normal for me. I rarely get the hiccups, but when I do, I feel like death. So yeah, that might happen. If it does, don't worry, it won't scare you any more than it hurts me. It's extremely painful at this point. But welcome back to another episode of Project Tranmere. In this episode, we begin our third season in the Premier League after the great escape last time out. Now, to begin this season, we had the question that we finally had to answer once and for all. How were we going to approach building this team? And you guys kind of, you know, you kind of agreed for the most part. Uh, we are going to just play players in their natural position. Whether or not that's the right way to go, who knows whether or not that's how I would do it. I mean, flat out, that's not how I would do it if we were playing the games, but we're not playing the games for the most part mainly because I'd win far too consistently, as we've already discovered. So, that is going to be the main thing to take away from this episode, is that we are going to have quite a few changes to the roster, loaning players out, and potentially signing some guys from the Youth Academy right out of the gates. So that's it. Let's take a look at the squad again. Reynaldo Grinero will be our starter this year. He's the highest rated at 20 years old. He is going nowhere. But everybody else, I'm thinking, is going to be loan eligible. Now, Dragasevich isn't going to get that much better, at least in terms of training. He's no longer at the promising trait, so I don't expect him to develop that much more. That said, he's on the loan list. We're going to keep him there just in case. Same thing with Declan Clark. I don't expect him to get that much better at this point. He seems to have capped out, but I think I'm going to try to loan him out first. That way, I mean, if he develops, not that we necessarily need the money because we don't with regens not being a factor into this, but still, I'm going to hold on to him and try to loan him out. And If that doesn't work, then he'll force his way out and it'll be fine. We'll get rid of him one way or another. So every goalkeeper, aside from Guerrero, is available to be loaned out. And hopefully we remove some of the clutter, because if not, i got to be honest, I think Walter Meyer might get the majority of the starts, or like he and Dragasevich will split the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go down, but that is the setup there. Now as far as the right-back position is concerned, quite obviously Liam O'Leary is going to be the starter for, again, obvious reasons. But that's where we run into a little bit of trouble as far as the depth is concerned. And I think, yet again, I'm leaning towards loaning out the majority of the players. Even if I can loan out Johannesson, I'm going to be fine with that because we have Wilson. And then at that, you know, at that point, at least Johannesson would get hopefully regular playing time elsewhere. So rather than focusing on moving players out, we do have, of course, some contracts to re-sign. But we're going to try to loan out the majority of players. So fair warning to start off this episode. I have had the hiccups for the better part of half an hour at this point, which is actually normal for me, if it's normal at all. I rarely get the hiccups, but when I do, it feels like death. So yeah, if it happens, don't worry, it won't scare you any more than it's going to hurt me at this point. Regardless, welcome back to another episode of Project Tranmere. In this episode, we begin our third season in the Premier League after last season's great escape. And as far as what this episode will bring, it's mainly going to be remembered for the fact that, again, certain players will be leaving the team, and we have finally decided how to approach the team building process this far into it where there was the debate over whether or not we play players in their actual roles or continue to play players based on their attributes. And after referring or deferring the question to you guys, I'm referring to your comments now. It's, it's, I'm a mess right now. We are going to be playing players in their natural position, even if it makes more sense for them to be playing elsewhere. With me not playing the games, it makes sense to do it that way. It really does. So let's go over the squad and we'll see how everything is going to be set up. Reynaldo Grunero, obviously going to be our starting goalkeeper. He is the man. He's the highest rated. He's one of the youngest. It's ridiculous how good he is. He goes nowhere. Then we get to the debatable point of Dragasevich, Clark, Harris, and Meyer. Now, obviously transfer money is not a factor outside of wanting to make sure that we have enough money to re-sign higher contracts once we get to that point, which 
We're already there, let's be honest. We'll have the money to afford a super team once everybody develops, if they develop. That said, I don't want to have a full roster because if we have to sign someone from the Youth Academy, that's going to cause a problem. So what I'm thinking here, to be honest, is that both Dragosevich and Clark are going to be transfer listed. That would be amazing to have Dragosevich as the tournament goalkeeper, or Clark for that matter, but I don't really think it's going to work out all that well. I mean, there's no, there's no guarantee. You know what I think I'm going to do? Dragosevich is going to be on loan because I don't really want to lose him. I am going to try to sell Declan Clark, though. He capped out a while ago in terms of his overall. He hasn't gotten that much better. I think Dragosevich has hit that point now where he's not going to get that much better. But we'll try to loan out Dragosevich. If he goes, cool. If not, it's fine. And Clark, I mean, just you're the third choice at an 82 overall, which is insane. So we'll try to get rid of him. Aside from that, Reese Harris and Walter Meyer will both be on loan, so that way we'll have four goalkeepers under contract. Two to go and two on loan, if that makes sense. Right back. I feel like my voice is screwed. I feel like I sound like a different person. Just, oh, oh my God. The hiccups just absolutely destroy me. We go to right back where obviously our starter is going to be Liam O'Leary. From there, we again have the tough choice of who to keep and who to get rid of. We certainly don't need five people. And I got to be honest, I still want to try to develop Johannesson, even with him having an expiring contract. So I think Josh Wilson's on the way out, which really sucks to say, but he would be third choice. He wouldn't be the starter on the second team. So he's 24 years old. He's been here for a while, but we'll see if he ends up leaving. And then on loan, I mean, Lund is 19, Kovac is 21, so I think that's kind of the obvious choice. We try to loan out Thomas Lund. I'm going to... I was thinking of trying to loan out Johannesson. I think we're going to block offers. He's going to be a staple on the bench and with the second team. And Simon Kovac, unfortunately, it just hasn't happened. And we're going to try to sell him. So, again, right back will be O'Leary, Johannesson, and Lund in the future. At center back, we have five options as well, which means we are good to go. The starting center back tandem is going to be Harrison Wright with Eugenio Galliano, which is crazy. And then Archie Bailey is also going to be on that second team. Right now, the second team defense is looking like Bailey and Weber, which is not great. And hopefully, we can start finding ourselves some center backs. I'm still going to try to loan out Zouabri. It makes a little bit more sense to try and have him, you know, be loaned out, get first team time elsewhere, hopefully. But if he doesn't go, that's okay. We'll try to get him some game time on the bench. But Look uh, look at us potentially signing a center back out of the Youth Academy here very, very soon. And again, we'll handle those contracts in a second. Left back, there's really nothing to do. Medved's the starter. He's staying. Richardson's the second team option. Villalaba represents a little bit of depth. So I'm good with that. Normally, I'd keep one depth uh, option between left back and right back. And I think regardless, we're good because I'm trying to loan out Lund. So it makes sense, actually. With us trying to loan out Lund, let's also set Via Laba to be loaned out, and then whatever one leaves first, cool, the other one gets taken off the list, and they are the backup option at that position. So again, Medved is fine, Richardson is fine, Via Laba is on loan. We already have Ishmael Diaby out on loan at AZ in the Netherlands, so that's good. CDMs, we obviously have quite a few options. Placido Cano, I'm going to set to go out on loan. I'm not entirely sure how I want to build the midfield. There's no guarantees he'd be loaned out anyway. Hopefully he ends up staying. And I think Sean Bailey as well. We have a couple of different players that could be loaned out. Bailey is one of them that I'm all right with getting rid of. Cordoba is going nowhere. As a matter of fact, I need to, it was fine the way it was. Nor is Timo Alton, who will be back in the midfield, of course. So those two are the keys. We'll see what happens with Cano and Bailey. Uh, Idris Kude is loan listed already. Ovi Anderson's contract is expiring, but you might notice he is the only left mid. We have a distinct lack of wingers right now, so odds are I'm going to set Anderson to go out on loan because otherwise he's just going to be a bench player. I mean, he'll be one hell of a super sub for us, but if I can get him to be loaned out, he'll be happier with that, and odds are won't force a move away from the club. So we'll try to loan him out after signing him to a new deal. 
the midfield as well. I mean, Berezovsky, of course, still here. Jay Morgan, Arne, we're pretty much good to go with those three here. No one's looking like they're leaving with the Groot and Placido Romero already out on loan. And as far as the strikers are concerned, Breen is loan listed. Duarte is not. Montendon and Moritz Meyer will be the two up top. If Meyer slips, Duarte takes over. Meyer goes straight to the bench. Ewan Morgan is not going to get any better, so he is still transfer listed. And he is currently our only right wing. So without having players be set up as you know, far as their attributes and their actual skill set, Without that, we don't have any wingers, so it's going to be a very midfield-centric... Well, that, that's a lie. We have a couple of players on the left-hand side, but no one for the right-hand side. Uh, Ryu Tabuchi, who's still looking great. Hopefully he can be loan-listed this year. Jonathan Kelly, I'm going to try to set him up to be out on loan as well, because he is going to be... I mean, he's going to be a depth option. You know what? That's, that's actually not the right move. Jonathan Kelly's going to be on the second team, because we're going to be running a two-striker formation. Bram DeGroff, though, will be out on loan. Guzman, we have loan-listed. Horatio Sanchez, same thing as Anderson. We have him loan listed with Mateo Villalaba and Abilo Fuentes already out on loan. So that is the current state of the team. And let's see what we have in terms of contracts. I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing. With the exception, of course, re-signing Ewan Morgan. I'd like to get some money for him, but we don't really have to. Uh, we are going to delegate, and hopefully we can sign Johannes in four years at an important role. That works for me. Go ahead and sign him back up. R.G. Bailey will delegate yet again five years under sporadic. That's fine. Who else? Anderson. Anderson wants to get paid five years, and he will get paid indeed. And Conrad Medved also going to get paid. <laughs> Five-year deal, though, for Medved. Not a bad bit of business from our assistant there. So let me just double-check here with Medved. Uh, still fine. Still set up the way we set him up. Good. So the roster, again, pretty straightforward now that we're handling it that way. Uh, the one thing to note here, see, I mean, the transfer budget is still just ridiculous. And if we max it out to a wage budget, again, we could afford to bring in pretty much anybody we ever wanted to, which is great to not have to worry about. So we're good to go. Ecuador, Peru, and Colombia. We're still finishing up the scouting in those departments. Actually, our final reports will be coming through quite quickly. The only other thing to check is the Youth Academy, where, again, we do have some really good options. Anthony Williams is there. I still think it'll be for the best to hold off on signing anybody until they force their way out, but you could argue that someone like Konstantin Zahner deserves to be playing outside of a Youth Academy. I would not be surprised to see him request to be signed within a month of us starting the sim. So let's take a look here. The scouting reports will be coming up before that game against Schalke. And we'll have to take care of the training as well. Still not entirely sure how I'm going to handle the training. I think it will still be getting players across the line to that next overall level. Obviously, we're going to be focusing on players. And the high up players are going to be developing so quickly anyway. That it's going to be them the majority of the time. As we get a transfer budget increase. Not like we need it. And a loan offer for Kovac. I'm okay with loaning him out, too, I suppose. I doubt this goes through, but if it does, I'm okay with that, I suppose. It's kind of weird that it was a loan offer, not a transfer offer, because I don't think I screwed that up. I might have, to be honest. As there we go, our scouting reports are in. Okay. Stuttgart have paid Declan Clark's release clause, $20.7 million. I'm good with that. We have no reason to sign him to a new deal to try and avoid that situation. I'm good with letting him go. So Declan Clark looks like he will be on the way out. As far as Ecuadorians are concerned, Feliciano Morales will sign him up for now. Eva, Eva Risto Carvajal, great name. Sign him up as well. Jesus. Quiroga also looking to be ridiculous. Do we have an update on any of these guys? 66 to a 90. He's a 63 overall, though. That's pretty strong. Whereas Benitez is a 47. We're going to go ahead and drop him. And we still don't have a ton of information on a lot of the guys that we have here in the academy. So could be could be rough here to get rid of some people. But odds are we'll have to. Nobody from Peru. 
and Kennedy is the final option here in Colombia as again we look to complete the South American tour I'm gonna hold off on signing either of those two we actually have one more month left I thought we were already in August we are not we are in July so We'll see what happens there a month down the road. I'm not sure how long we're going to be live for with this episode, but I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of transfer offers, so it might just be worth staying live for. Cano and Berezovsky both want to play, which is fine. It can get you a look. I mean, you would have already seen the formation as we scrolled past it. Unfortunately, it did the whole, hey, we're going to fuck up your formation for no reason kind of deal. I'm going to play Galliano on that left-hand side. Alton in there and then swap out Arne. So that gets you a look at what the bench is shaping up to be right now. So it was Cano who wanted an opportunity to play, which is fine. I'll actually play him instead of Alton. Uh, yeah, Alton can play more in the middle. And who else wanted it? I've forgotten already. Who else wanted a chance to play? I don't remember. It was somebody on the... It was Berezovsky. That's who it was. Alton, you can take a seat. There we go. We're good. So... For the most part, the majority of the first team will be playing here, and I'm hoping for a big preseason out of one Moritz Meyer. We need him to start delivering like we know he can. We do beat Schalke, which is huge for us. They don't have the most recognizable names in their lineup, but it's Moritz Meyer scoring both goals, so I'm not complaining. Ask and you shall receive. Hopefully we've found a way to make that happen, as shockingly... Shockingly, Kovac does get loaned out. Okay. And for Clark, he is gone to Stuttgart. So Declan Clark's on the way out. We also get a loan offer. Is that PSG? PSG going after Horatio Sanchez. Maybe I want to keep him. That's ridiculous. But Declan Clark is gone after all this time. He was our first real, you know, really strong option in goal. And he is off to Germany in the Bundesliga. So... We could take a look at uh, some stats there for him if you wanted me to, but it's it's tough to see him go. It's tough to see him go. I'm going to focus on players that we have signed specifically here just to get you a look as well at guys who are still listed under promising, and Cordoba is actually going to get some attention here. Let's try to bump up that stamina a little bit. I don't think we're going to get him over the line in terms of bumping everything up, but that's okay. Wait a minute, I hit Sean Bailey. I was going to say, wait a minute, see, this is why I normally cut some of this out, but it's okay. This episode can be long form. It's not a big deal. We'll make it through it. And obviously next episode we'll get into the land of just breezing through the season if we can. Although I do know for some people's taste, we've made way too much progress way too early. But hey, you know... It still uh, results in an end-of-season save like last year, so it works. Good old Zuabri. Who else is close to going up again? Medved. You know what? I think we still have to focus on Graniero. If there's ever one more person left, Graniero's the focus. So we'll try to get Cordoba and Bailey over the edge. Try to get that stamina up there as well to start. We end up playing Tigris on the 9th. And we'll see if anything happens before then. Indeed it does. Inter! Wants after the Canadian international Josh Wilson for 17.2. Another long-term member of this team. I'm going to delegate that, and we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm all right with the assistant handling it, but with us being decisive on how we're building this team, it makes no sense to keep a Josh Wilson, unfortunately. As we also get a loan offer for Dragasevich now, the question is, is Fulham a Premier League team this year? Because I am not willing to send him to another Premier League team. There's no way. Fulham is not a Premier League team. Wow. That is going to be disrespectful. How can they afford his wages if they're in the championship? I see no way that he accepts a loan to a championship team. I simply don't see it. He also has a $41 million release clause. I don't see that happening at all. Meyer wants Clark's spot, and you do have his spot. You are now the third choice keeper. We'll see whether or not you hold on to that right. As we're actually going to start Meyer in this game. I don't want to play Dragosevich just in case he gets injured. Let's see. Who else? Who else wants in? Let's play Duarte and Kelly up top. We'll put Breen and Tabucci on the bench. Altonen into the lineup. You go with Cordoba. 
And we'll put uh, we'll put Kude in there as well. Again, distinct lack of a cam in the lineup right now, but what are you going to do? Let's give everybody a chance here. Like I said, I think we're going to stay live for this episode. And at the very least, you can see how the roster is going to be shaping up with this new approach that we are taking. As it's going to be Zuabri and Lund on the bench. So that will be the team for this game. I'm probably going to have to fix it. Morgan's going to stay in, which is fine. Do I have to fix it? I don't! EA, look at you, not completely butchering my lineup after backing out like you've been doing. How kind of you! I hate that glitch. I, I don't know, maybe they finally fixed it. I, know, I think there was a patch recently, but this is what it is. Oh my goodness. Okay. 3-0 over Tigris. Anderson off the bench, Breen and Jay Morgan all score. And it's only preseason, but this is really good news for us that we're picking up some wins early. Very good news. Medved, you sat for one game in the preseason. I wish there was an option to backhand a player when they say something stupid like that. It's one of the worst parts of this game. As Horatio Sanchez is off to PSG, which is shocking. Dragosevich has been loaned out as well. Unreal. What, did they fix this? Is there a patch that I missed where they fixed this? Every loan offer and transfer offer has gone through. Dragosevich will be playing in the championship next or this season, which is insane. He, he's so much better than that. Fulham, I guarantee, is going to be promoted. We also get a loan offer for uh, for Tabucci from a Portuguese side, I do believe. And if this goes through, then they fixed it, amazingly. Uh, Wilson, 18.2 million to enter. Again, we don't have a reason to keep him. I don't want to have the, you know, the overall team depth just be clogged. I mean, it's not like we can be a Chelsea where you have 17,000 players out on loan at any given time. We do have a roster limit. And I think, speaking of the roster, oh boy, I want to get DeGroff onto the bench. So you know what, let's go with that little setup right there. And we'll at least give DeGroff a chance on the bench. Is there anybody else who hasn't started? I think for the most part we're fine outside of Villalaba. I think for the most part we're fine because I still kind of want to win this game even though we're pretty much guaranteed to go through in this preseason tournament regardless. So let's uh, let's do it. Starting off against Monterey. It's funny how we ended up in a preseason tournament with two Mexican clubs and a Bundesliga club. Can we get the win? Yes we do. Meyer, well done. Well done. I probably shouldn't have started you. We do have Harris who's a 65. But, hey, I'm all right with us going perfect in a preseason tournament. More than all right by me. So we get a loan offer for Cano. Stuttgart are not done rating us, which is fine. If that goes through, I'm going to be over the moon. As Harrison Wright's also going to complain, I didn't start for one game, coach. Trust me, you're a starting center back this year. You're going to start a lot. A lot more than you thought you would at the very least. As Cordoba and Bailey aren't exactly making a ton of progress, but that's okay. God, we have to play Bilbao, which could uh, could suck, depending on what their roster looks like right now. Could be better than I would hope, as Tabucci's loan move has been rejected. We do get a loan offer for Key and Breen from another German club, Veda Bremen. We'll see if that goes through, but the loan offer to Tabucci falls through. So maybe it's not perfect, maybe I was just getting extremely lucky. There is a possibility of that. So... As far as the roster is concerned, Graniero gets the chance, and we're going to roll out the big guns here. We are going to roll out the big guns. I want to win this. I should have established the first team, but I didn't want to do that until the roster is 100% set, because then otherwise I'm going to have to sit here and change it back and fix it again anyway, so it's fine. Let's bring in Berezovsky. Cordoba's also going to be on the bench. Let's go with a more attacking option. We'll bring in Arne. And Cano will take a seat. Bailey will also be on the bench, maybe? Possibly. Could bring in Kude, could bring in Guzman. You know what? I like I like Guzman too much to sit him. So Bailey, sorry. We're gonna have two wingers on the bench for no reason whatsoever. It'll be fine. Let's go with Johannesson and Bailey on the bench. Beautiful. So Jay Morgan's a little bit tired, I guarantee. He ends up getting subbed out, more than likely. I mean, it uh, doesn't sound like much of a guarantee, I know. But still, let's see what we can do. We're running, essentially, our first team here against Bilbao. Hopefully we can get the win and move on in this preseason tournament. We cannot. 
2-1 loss. Meyer gets the goal and Morgan gets hurt. Hooray. That could have gone... That could have gone a little bit better. <clears throat> Just going to say a tiny bit better. How long is Morgan out for? Because that could be extremely detrimental. Hold on before anything else. Two days. Okay, that's not too bad. So, sorry I didn't make it to the championship. I'm sorry. Uh, 3.1 loan offer for Reese Harris, that goalkeeper. The Aussie. We'll see if that goes through. And Josh Wilson is gone. $18.2 million. He is off to Italy to play for Inter Milan. And, again, some, some long-term, long-time faces on this team are on their way up. Placido Cano has been loaned out to Stuttgart. And Bram de Graaf will hopefully end up going to Turkey. We're, we're getting some stuff done here, though. We're wheeling the deal. We're making some moves. We're freeing up some spots. I'm feeling good about this, as Harris does not end up being loaned out. De Graaf uh, also not going anywhere. But Kian Breen is also off to Germany. And we get a loan offer from Lech Poznan with, or Poznan, Poznan, for Kude. And we'll see if that goes through. Why a Turkish club didn't go in for Kude? I think he was Turkish. I kind of looked at the, I uh, looked at the country quickly. You get the point. A lot of moves being made here early, but it is for the best as we establish this roster for this season. And maybe I'm a little bit too optimistic from preseason tournament results and Maybe I'm just a little bit too excited to see what the squad can do now that we're back in this new setup, but we'll see. Sean Bailey, a loan offer from Real Batiste. Hopefully he ends up going out to Spain. Coude it did not go anywhere, which I suppose isn't all that surprising. That's the best way to phrase it, I guess. Uh, we get a loan offer for Joaquin Guzman from Brighton now, unlike with an 84 rated keeper. If he goes to another Premier League club, I think I'm okay with that, at least for now, until he scores a goal that results in a loss, which will probably happen, knowing my luck, right? As he has been loaned out to Brighton. Cool. And what's this other one? Bailey's also gone. They had to have fixed this. They had to have finally fixed this in January, late January, early February, because I have never had this much success loaning people out before. I cannot believe that we've been able to get through this many changes without having been rejected. It's insane. Never happens, or at least, I mean, it's either they fixed it again, or I'm getting so unbelievably lucky with these moves. Regardless, I'm happy with the results as scouted players, and we get a loan offer from Fiorentina for Villalaba, which I'm also good with. Now, I believe, I don't remember if we loaned out that other right back, but we do have the money to waste that we could recall somebody if we have to. Uh, Luzerne, Harris, go to Switzerland, please. Please go to Switzerland. It'd be good for you. It's not that crazy competitive of a league. I mean, it is, but, you know, in this game, you know, you'll have a chance to play is the point. And hopefully he does. As that's been dropped, Zuabri, San Jose Earthquakes, that would be a good place for you. Morocco, that's what it was. I saw the red... I'm like, was that Turkey or Morocco? Now we know. Is there anybody who's worth getting rid of? Oriana's not going to make it. Bottom line, just not going to make it. We'll get rid of him. Arne, decent overall, but that low-end potential, you're gone. I'm sorry. Uh, Manolo Ponce is looking okay still. Ojeda's worth keeping for the moment. Yara's worth keeping. Young Bauer's a beast in the making. Zahner's a beast in the making. Anybody's potentials really drop off here. We have so many high-level high, high level players here. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And we will potentially add more here in a moment. As we'll have a little bit of training to attend to. If it stops, Villalaba has also been loaned out. And we should have our final scouting reports. And we do. Let's continue on with the training there of Cordoba and Bailey. Cordoba did end up going up to a 79, which is good, and I think that'll be the last training session I use on him. Probably shouldn't even have used that one, but it's okay. So Villalaba is also gone to Fiorentina. Let's see what we have here. Colombians, anybody, anybody, uh, Virgilio Campos, sign him up. Uh, Fausto Pounce, Fausto, Ruben Chiesta, oh my god, all right. All right, I see what we're doing here. <clears throat> now, the backup plan here, obviously, is just to finally sign Zoner. 
Although Compost is a 47 at 17 years old, that's going to take him forever to develop. We're going to drop him immediately. Not worth the time investment. Oh my god. All right. Well, let's sign Graniero. And we have two other players worth signing. How the hell are we going to do this? We literally can't do this without signing somebody else. So Zahner's a 70. It's finally happening. Constantine, welcome to the team. There's a chance that I end up signing Williams and Youngbauer, although Roldan also should be signed. Bello could be signed as well. And you know what? I think we're going to do it. Abilo Bello, welcome to the team. Who else did we have? Avaristo Roldan, welcome to the team. Uh, Walter Youngbauer, we're going to sign him as well. And Anthony Williams, screw it, you're being signed too. So there's a lot that we're going to have to do in terms of uh, setting new players to go out on loan. But Ruben Kiesta has to be signed, as does Prado. And that's just Colombia. We still have two other scouting reports to get to. Don't hit the wrong button. Thank you, me, for not being dumb. Let's see what happens here. Diaz can be signed. Kiesta can be signed. And that is it for Ecuador. And last but not least, the Peruvians. Do we have anybody? Not really. Excuse me. Carrizio, probably not going to get the job done. So, not, not bad, as I believe we just finished up our tour of South America. Did we not? I can never remember <laughs> from episode to episode. I think that was everywhere in South America. Ah, goodness me. Let's, <clears throat> let's double check this. It was not. Whoops, hitting wrong buttons all the time. That's another reason why I make jump cuts in the series a lot. So Venezuela, done. Colombia, done. Ecuador, done. Peru is done. Brazil is done. Bolivia is done. Paraguay has not been done for a second time. We are not yet done with South America, but once we are, we won't be seeing it for a long time. We're going to Paraguay. We're going to Uruguay. We're going back to Uruguay. And Mark Barr. Mark Barr. Would you like to go to Argentina or Chile? You can go to Argentina. And Chile will be the last nation in South America that we have to scout. So the scouting is set up. In the meantime, let's move on. Let's not move on. I'm dumb. Hold on. Before we get to that game against Wolves, please stop the sim. Thank you. We need to go check out our new players, the litany of new players that we have. I cannot believe Dragosevich accepted a loan offer to a championship level team. It's crazy. And Walter Meyer. So Walter Meyer right now is our second choice keeper. We can actually take him off of the loan list. That has been decided again. Clark is gone. Harris will still be loan listed. Hopefully that works out. But Meyer will be the man to lead us into tournaments. So we'll see how he does. As far as the right backs are concerned, uh, Lund will actually be removed because we loaned out via Laba. So it's going to be O'Leary, Johansson, and Lund as a depth option. And we're going to try, like how actually, we're going to try to still loan out Thomas Lund because Roldan could be the depth option. So we'll still try to loan out either of those two. Center backs, we still have Wright and Galliano as our top two. Bailey and Weber are there, and we will try to loan out Anthony Williams and Suabri, either or, as they'll be the depth option. Anyway, left back, we're good, with Villalaba out on loan. Uh, central defensive mids, Cordoba and Alton, and that's fine. We'll try to loan out Youngbauer. Bald at 17. That's unfortunate. Bello, we'll try to loan him out as well. I'm going to look at the players in a second, obviously. We'll look at certain attributes and everything. So let me get everybody set up from here. Just to make sure that we are good to go, and I believe we are. Beautiful. So as far as the attributes are concerned, where are the new boys? They're back down this way. We start off with Constantine Zahner. Three-star, three-star, high, medium. Not too bad. Not too bad. The pace is a bit low, though, actually. If we were to be playing this in the other way, I'd probably set him up as a cam. But still, hopefully he either gets time this season with us or goes out on loan. Bello is five-star, three-star, medium, medium. 
Not bad. Again, someone else who would probably be played as a cam. Looking pretty good. Young Bauer, three star, three star, low medium. Eh, those work rates aren't exactly preferred. And was that it? It was not. We have Williams, three star, five star as a center back, low high work rates. So that's tremendous. And rolled on. Two star, two star, medium high. It's not that bad, though. It's not that bad. Six foot one as well for the Mexican. Let's see what else we can accomplish in this episode. I think I just want to get beyond deadline day and have this roster be 100% established. As we get a loan offer for Tabuchi. Hopefully he can go. I don't even know where the hell that club plays. Is that Colombia, maybe? That looks like a South American club. That's all I can say with certainty. As, again, you would have seen the big... The big news, Renato Sanchez brought into Wolves. That could hurt. International management offer for Slovenia. We're going to reject that. But again, in the future, international management sounds quite interesting. <clears throat> hint, hint, wink, wink towards a, I mean, the probable next series. So, as far as what the squad looks like at the moment, let's do just a little bit of a uh, little bit of management here. And again, heading into the next episode and everything, I'll have team sheets organized. But let's take a look at what we are dealing with and organize everything. We are looking pretty good. Pretty good indeed. A lot of younger players here, though. So it is going to be Mott and Don and Meyer up top, Duarte and Kelly on the bench. I don't want Meyer there, though. Zoner might actually be on the bench. And I don't plan on using Morgan unless we suffer an injury. Just to establish that. I know he's a 72, but I don't really want to play him when I know he's he might not be that effective and he's not going to get any better, basically. So the midfield right now is Morgan, Berezovsky, Arne, and Altonen with Anderson on the bench, Cordoba on the bench as well, and Zahner as another kind of wing option. So those the wingers will get the opportunity to play when we need more attacking midfielders inserted into the lineup. And then defensively, still good with Benved, Galliano, Wright, and O'Leary. Graniero up to an 87 in poor form right now, but an 87 getting the job done here for us. We are looking good. So as far as the roles are concerned, I think the captain still has to be Meyer. He has the opportunity to prove that he deserves it. And I think Mont and Don, actually no, Galliano's a beast in terms of curve. And then Mont and Don. 78 free kick accuracy. No, it's got to be Mont and Don. So, Mont and Don, you get to roll on all three. And then for a penalty taker, it is it is looking rough, isn't it? <laughs> oh, boy. Let's have that be Mont and Don, too. And hopefully he ends up being better at it. Morgan can be the corner taker as he's all, all of five foot four or something like that. So it doesn't really benefit us much to have him on the outside. Our first... Premier League game of the season. We host Wolves. Can we get off to a good start? Sanchez is in the lineup. Adama, they still have a couple of Portuguese players in. Montandon scores in the 21st minute. I'm going to keep this live for now. Quote, unquote, live. Montandon scores again. Beautiful start for the team here. Can we hold on to get all three points is the question. Jay Morgan makes it three. And that is the final score. Three nil. 3-0, I hit the button there. I'm, a, I'm like, okay, at this point we're good to go, right? 3-0, we have a win. <laughs> Technically, we're in first uh, first place in the Premier League. That's not going to last, but that's okay. A great start to the season just to get a win out of the way. I think I'm going to put a little bit of work onto uh, into Meyer as well. Onto Meyer, into Meyer, whatever. Uh, Brom de Graaf, let's get you up to that next level. Try to help you focus on your uh, stamina a little bit. And for Duarte, you're getting close to going up. What do you have stamina-wise? A 63. I have him try to focus on that as well. It might take a couple of weeks. But a beautiful start. 3-0 over Wolves at home. And hopefully this was the spark that we needed. The moves that we needed to make to get back on the right track. Again, there are obviously so many different ways you can set up a team. If this was the PC version, I probably would have changed right backs to center backs and maybe things would have rolled a little bit better. 
it is what it is, though, and we're trying to make the most of it now. As Young Bauer will hopefully go down to Bristol, who are championship at best at this point. We'll be playing Newcastle this upcoming weekend. Again, we're going to sim through this month before we call it an episode. We'll see what we can do here. Will there be any other news of the transfer variety? There will be. Young Bauer's move didn't go through. But Lanus wants Roldan. I don't blame them for that. Hopefully that goes through. Harrison, you are welcome. Boy, you are just talkative, aren't you? One second, I'm unhappy. The next second, coach, I'm so happy. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. Make up your mind. Uh, Roldan also doesn't get loaned out. We might be stuck with a couple of these young players for the season, although Zahner going out to Fenerbahce would be a great opportunity for him. The team will stay the same, obviously. No change is necessary. Let's play Newcastle. Let's see how this goes. They lost 3-1 to Arsenal in their first game of the season. We're on the road for the first time. We'll see what happens here. Their lineup is definitely either regen, Youth Academy stacked at this point. Let's sim the rest of this game. 2-1. Beautiful. Harrison Wright, of all players, gets the winning goal in the 84th minute. So we scored first with Montendon. He's on a tear right now. Uh, David, or David perhaps, uh, tied it in the 47th minute, 10 minutes later. And then Harrison Wright scores the winner. We are 2-0 to begin the season. Wonderful. <laughs> Just wonderful stuff. You, you, you love to see it. You love to see it. As Bailey goes up to a 74, which is great. We need him to be improved so that that second team defense at least has a chance. I'd prefer them to go as far as they can in tournament play so that they actually get to play more frequently because otherwise they won't. But we are one of three teams right now who have won both of their games to start the season. As a lot of these, a lot of these moves aren't going through anymore. And that kind of scares me. It's not the worst case scenario to have all the young players that we just signed to be stuck on the team until January. I wouldn't even really define it as stuck. They should get some opportunity. Oh, Christ alive. We have to play Manchester United next. Well, we're one of three teams with a perfect record. Uh, that is not going to last as all of these loan moves are just falling apart. But, you know, I'll take, I'll take six points from our first three games. I'll take it. I mean, we've been world beaters before, but I have no expectation for this at all. And to answer your question, yes, I am going to look at what our overall ratings are, but once the team is 100% set, because something might still happen, like Thomas Lund can go out to Lazio, and that might change what we're looking like, because I want to set up the second team as well, so you can see how good of a squad we'll be running in tournament play. Again, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, and everything like that. Get a transfer offer. Wow, really, an outright transfer offer for Roldan. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I was going to say, like, wait a minute, out, outright transfer offer. No, he is going nowhere. Nice try. Nice try. All right, let's do this. We have a chance to stay top of the league with a win. They are winless. They've scored one goal. In two games to start the season, we have home field advantage as well. Can we pull off a miracle? De Gea still in goal. John Stone's there. Rashford misses a pen, which is amazing for us. Deli Alley, Romelu Lukaku on the bench. Hamilton scores. Not sure what that is. Their bench is better than our starting lineup, I think. Is there a late goal to tie it? Hopefully so. Hamilton has the difference maker right now. Can we get a goal in the final 10 minutes to snag a point, please? No, we cannot. We weren't embarrassed. We put up a good fight. But Manchester United are able to win that particular game. They hand us our first loss of the season. And in disappointing fashion, we will not go unbeaten. Really, my rating's going to drop that far. I lost to Manchester United. Give me a, give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. You're going to be that harsh because I lost to United? Really? I know it's our third season in the Prem and all, but I mean, come on. Bournemouth has been in the Prem. Bournemouth in real life has been in the Prem for how long? I still don't think they go in to games expecting to beat Manchester United. As uh, Juventus, <laughs> they bought back Luke Shaw. That's amazing. That is incredible. And anybody who doesn't get why that's incredible or hilarious, it, it's your loss. <laughs> Justin Cliver goes to Arsenal. 
And speaking of Bournemouth, how do you like that? That is exactly whom we will be playing next to end this episode. I don't know who Oliveira is from Watford, but good lord. Good lord. We will have to look him up, won't we? Jesus. Jesus. All right. So, Lund has been loaned out, which is fine. That means Roldan will be staying. Zahner's also been loaned out to Italy, Atalanta. And hopefully, we end up seeing Tabucci go here as well. It's nice that we've been able to loan out as many players as we have. I feel like we've been really shortchanged on that because of the game's shortcomings. I want to take a look here. Uh, we might not find out the results until the next episode. But, oh, that's right, I can just go this way. Oh, uh, goodness me, I botched. I should have gone the other way by default. It's different than it is on, uh, oh my god. It's different than it is on, uh, on foot. But what are you going to do? Uh, Barcelona here, he had to have been a striker, right? They have Dahlberg, Oliveira. <laughs> oh, Watford, what are you doing? <laughs> Good lord, he has to be a regen to be that good, right? There's no way he's fresh out of the Youth Academy. Good lord. Thankfully, he's gone, because that means Watford's a lot easier to be ahead of in the standings. That is great news for us. Let's play this game here against Bournemouth, and by play, I mean Sim, of course. And we'll see what happens. And maybe, just maybe, there will be a late move or two. Please don't tell me this froze. Okay, it didn't. I see the lights shining in the background. Let's see what happens. And hopefully... Uh-oh, what happened? Who's hurt? Oh, Graniero. He's on international duty. That is harsh. As is Duarte. Okay, so we're going to have to completely change up this team. It's going to be Meyer in goal. Tabuchi can't be on the bench. I don't want him to be hurt. So it will be DeGroff who's on the bench. That's painful. I don't want Tabuchi to potentially be hurt before going out on loan. Our second team has gotten so young. We are really going to need to train them up, but there's a lot of promise there. So the midfield is going to be, or at least in terms of midfield subs, it's going to be Anderson, Cordoba, and let's go with Bello. It makes sense to go with him over Youngbauer, I would say. And defensively, we look to be fine. Everything looks to be set up there. We have our center back and our right back. I think we're good. So there we go. A couple of changes to the team. Nothing too crazy. Let's see if we can beat Bournemouth, win three out of our first four games this season. But we have to rely on Walter Meyer and goal to get the job done. So his first ever Premier League start, it is a major moment for him as we go down to Bournemouth and hopefully we can pick up a win here. They score nine minutes in with Brooks. I'm going to keep it live here. Maybe that will give us a better chance to find success. It's been hit or miss so far, though. Obviously, Montendon gets hurt and we are officially in disaster territory. Come on, boys. You can do this. You can do this. Fight back. Get a draw. At least do it for Meyer. Please. We were shortchanged. Please score a goal. Somebody, Meyer scores. And then Brooks scores on a penalty a minute later. And we choke away a point. We win our first two games of the season and drop the next two. And Jan Montendon is out for five weeks. We had everything start off. Everything started off so well. We win our first two games, and now we lose our last two, and lose Montendon for a month. Absolutely ridiculous. A roller coaster of an episode in its own right, and I don't think I approve. So we won't be able to see for sure what a full-strength team looks like, actually, because of international duty, hopefully, and the injuries. Hopefully, Kude ends up going out to Poland. That would be nice. Get him out of here. And we'll see what other big moves happen. If anything, Tabuchi still refuses to go anywhere. I cannot believe Watford had a player of that caliber. That is absolutely insane. So disappointing, though, too, to lose to Bournemouth like that. We've given up a couple of penalties so far this season. Another loan offer for Kude. I do not know. I think that's a Swedish team, judging by the IF. 
I might be wrong, but I think that's a Swedish team. Maybe a Norwegian team? A Scandinavian. We'll go with that. One hour left. Kude will not be going anywhere, so our team is set. Let's take a look here. Why am I going that way? I'm not Liverpool. Uh, let's see what we did here. We brought in just under $39 million worth of profit, which isn't too bad, and loaned out quite a few players, to say the least. But that Oliveira deal, that is absolutely crazy. We're down to a 62 rating. I'm not saying I'm very concerned, but you never like to see that number be red. At least I don't. If you get a look at some of the top deals, for those of you who care about seeing, oh my god, <laughs> for those of you who care about seeing how things have gone down uh, around the world. So, I think for this episode, we are probably done. Altonen might miss our next game. We get another transfer off for Roldan, which again will be ignored. Get out of here with that nonsense. Let's double check the Youth Academy. We only have a little bit of housekeeping to do here. I, it sucks. I really wanted to look at our best roster, but it doesn't really make that much sense to. 81 to an 87. He's a 53. Ojeda is going to be on the way out. Uh, Tito is also going to be on the way out. I need to see that in a 90. I need to see that still be towards a 90 if it's going to be worth it. Prado's a 67. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. So we still have some good pieces there, and obviously we just signed quite a few people. They want us to finish in a Europa League spot. I simply don't see how that's going to happen. Uh, let me sim ahead here ever so slightly. It's a damn shame Harris didn't get to go out on loan. Uh, Roldan, let's try to focus on that stamina. But let me sim ahead here. I want to try and get this team to be as healthy as they possibly can, have everybody back from international duty. That way we can at least take a look at some of our ratings. I guess I should have done that on the very first day. Another transfer offer for Roldan. Real Madrid, no. But that's a good thing, actually. <laughs> Real Madrid are interested. Did I? Hold on. I need to check him. I must have accidentally put him on the transfer list if everyone's going after him. But that's a really good sign that not just like a West Ham's going after him, a Real Madrid sent an offer for him. That is tremendous. <laughs> yeah, he's only on the loan list. Leave us alone. He's not going anywhere. There's no way, especially now that I know you have that in that much interest in him. He goes nowhere. Hopefully Young Bauer, though, can go out to Groningen, whose name I'm probably butchering, Groningen, Groningen, something like that. I'm not even going to try because I don't want to embarrass myself, okay? Paraguay had at least one person. Oh, the menu lags. Oh, oh, the menu lags sometimes. Morris in Uruguay. Hello, Morales, even though you're a goalkeeper. Hello, Miranda. Holy hell. It's a pretty good start. And we go up to Mr. Barr in Argentina. Hello, Moyano. Although we are going to have to drop somebody. And it's not going to be anybody off of potentials, I don't think. So it's going to have to be an older player who's way down there in terms of overall. If there is one that fits that description. Morales, I think, immediately fits that description. So, sorry to him. We're going to hold off on signing Romero, but sign Moyano. And I think that'll work out for us. There you go, our first three scouting reports from three of our final four South American countries that we will scout before we head over to the other side of the globe. Please, somebody just take Young Bauer. This is more like it as far as me struggling to get players to go out on loan. This is more what it's like in terms of people just rejecting everything. Case in point. This is, okay, they totally didn't fix it. I just either got really lucky or it's even better at the start of the season, more consistent at the start of a season than I remember it being. As we get a loan offer for Zuabri, and just nothing, nothing is going through right now. Down to a 62. Let me get to our next Premier League game. International duty will be over. Although, let's see. Who, 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 who? Who goes there? Who, who goes, who goes? Arne? Haven't put work into you for a while. 63 stamina. Yeah, I mean, our team's definitely... Our team's definitely... Our team definitely has a... a you know, a universal stamina issue. Our team's definitely stamina... 
Uh, stamina, I was gonna go with deficient, but, I mean, that's technically not correct. It's fine, is the point. None of these loan offers are gonna go through, ever. Ever. I'm not even gonna bother deleting the emails anymore. I'll do it later, just get me to this game against Palace, please. Thank you, and we'll try to loan out Young Bauer. I doubt it goes through. Cordoba wants to play. I can make that happen. So we look to be full health. We are full strength outside of the Montendon injury. But if I leave Montendon there, O'Leary's up to an 86. Am I allowed to save this? Thank you. So let's take a look. If I were to leave that at 100%, and just make a second team sheet now. I'll have to fix this later, of course, but and we can name it three instead of two. That's fine. Don't worry about it. What will both teams be looking like in terms of ratings? That is the real question. So it's going to be Duarte and Kelly in tournament play with Tabucci and Graf on the bench. Uh, Cordoba will technically be playing full time. Young Bauer will not be, so I think it's going to be Bello and Kude. And then I think Anderson's going to have to be the cam by default. I think he's going to have to be. So that'll be when uh, he gets to play. So maybe I have him replace Jay Morgan. What do you guys think about that? How do we try to get Anderson to play full-time? Should he replace Morgan or do we leave Morgan there? Because it's a second team and it doesn't necessarily matter as much, but we may have gotten rid of a few too many midfielders. That's that's a debatable point. <laughs> that's a debatable point. Uh, so Bailey will be playing in the middle with Weber, which means Zuabri will be on the bench with Roldan. And that is what the second team is going to look like, with the exception... i got to be honest here, I think Jay Morgan might play twice and then we have Anderson on the bench and I think Morgan just by default you get to be on the bench here in this situation I mean otherwise I end up playing you know no Morgan you're screwed we're gonna go with Williams and we're gonna have three defenders there available I'd rather have that extra defender available just that someone gets a chance to play but otherwise I think Morgan has to be there <laughs> As weird as that is, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Here, we'll do it uh, We'll do it this way. And we'll just put a goalkeeper, Harris, on the bench, and then maybe that way he'll be a piece. So that's going to be the bench for the second team. Do I expect them to do well? No. <laughs> not really. Maybe not in the majority of the tournaments or the, the higher-ups. Maybe not the FA Cup, but maybe they could do well elsewhere. The captain for this squad should absolutely be Ovi Anderson. Free kick takers. Duarte is actually pretty good. Bello wasn't that bad. We'll have it be Duarte. The penalty taker is going to be Duarte as well. And the corner man, let's have it be... Eh, for that setup, let's have it be Bello. So that is what the second team's going to look like heading into the tournaments. Uh, for the most part, though, that's full strength, right? We're going to have to make some slight changes. Uh, it will be Duarte starting with Meyer while Montendon is injured. I backed out when I shouldn't have. I'm sorry, I'm clearly an amateur. So as far as what our team looks like full-time, at their best, 81, 79, and an 81, four and a half star. Not too bad, considering there might have been some things I had done differently had we not taken that little detour. But in terms of who were better than, we have better ratings than Watford, especially over the 70 that they're running in goal right now. So again, it's an 81, 79, and an 81. Uh, not quite as uh, not quite as good as West Ham, but you know, can compete with Wolves. It's a good thing that we beat them. Arsenal, not the strongest at this point. We should have beaten Bournemouth. That's really not a discussion, but just so that you can see what these other teams are looking like at this point, in case you want to know, in case you want to see what your favorite team's looking like, uh, there you go. And at least that way, too, you can see the ratings of some other teams to see how we stack up and really where we should finish this season in terms of how good we should be. Uh, so let's back out for the moment. Last thing to check is to go over here to see what the second team is rated and how well they are going to stack up. They are currently rated 72, 70, 
and a 74. That will obviously improve, particularly the midfield with Kude and Bello, but that's not terrible. It's not terrible. I mean, unless we run into a great team in one of the tournaments, we should be able to get through with that squad. That'll do it for this one. It's been a long enough episode. In the next one, we continue onward with the season four games down, 34 to go. Let me know what you thought of all the moves, the approach, of course, that we decided to take, and everything in between. I thank you guys for those of you who are still enjoying and supporting this series. I'm still having a lot of fun with it, and hopefully... This is the season where we start to see Tranmere Rovers towards that spot on the table, towards the latter half of the season.